Expedition to Castle Ravenloft by A.S. Riel Chapter 1 The Two Letters Letter from Helen Harker to Godfrey Harker Dearest Godfrey, your family needs you now more than ever, and I pray you won't turn your back on us. Your brother, evidently enamoured by your own foolish ways, has taken it upon himself to set about being an adventurer too. Percy had taken several local commissions, but it wasn't enough for him, just like it was never enough for you. He met a stranger, some kind of traveller in an inn, said the man had a job for him and that he'd taken it on. He took the little coin he'd made so far and disappeared off into town. When he came back, he did not stay for long. The last I saw of him, he was packing with Silver Sheen and Wolfsbane and heading east up into the mountains. That was a month ago, Godfrey. I've heard nothing since. I suspect only the worst, but I beg of you, if you receive this letter, go into those godsforsaken mountains and find him. I am old and alone with no sons to comfort me. If only to bury his body, I want nothing more than my Percy returned to me. Please, Godfrey, I have asked very little of you since you walked out of our home all those years ago, but with all my heart I beg of you, don't let this go unanswered. With despair and hope. Your mother, Helen Harker. Godfrey Harker's Journal, 5th of Nightall. I received a letter from my mother today. Laced with her usual degree of guilt and shame, it brought particularly dire news. Poor Percy. The young fellow has clearly gotten himself in some hot water. The Cathanian Mountains are an old and remote place. Very little good is to be found in them, so I was not best pleased to learn he'd gone missing there. Usually my mother's pleas for attention, or my own return to home, come with a certain twang of jealousy, but this is different. It seems my family does indeed need me. Though, something of this magnitude most likely needs a little more than just myself. I made up my mind to go and find my brother. So that evening, when I knew it would be at its busiest, I went to the guild hall. I knew there would be little money involved in this pursuit, so I wasn't most hopeful of finding too many companions for the journey, but I'd need more than just my own wits and sword if I was to find my brother in the Cathanians and get out unscathed. The hall was rowdy and the drinks were flowing. This suited me nicely, plenty of soft targets with overinflated egos. As it turned out, I was in luck, and neither needed the drink nor much charm. After speaking with a few members, I struck up conversation with Wilhelmina Oak. I've not worked with her of late, but she always seems very capable. She buys enough rounds at the hall and lives in a nice enough part of Waterdeep to tell me she's doing well enough for herself in the game. It turns out that as well as the guild, she's also got herself wrapped up in the Lightbringers. The sun's embroidered on every garment she wears was enough to point to a devotion to Pelor. She said that her masters in the Order had requested someone to journey up into the Cathanians as backup to an expedition that went up that way looking to stamp out some kind of undead infestation. My heart did sink a little at this. I had hoped at the beginning of this endeavour to be retrieving my brother alive. Talk of undead roaming the mountains only dampened those hopes. Despite this, I was happy enough to find at least one companion, but was swiftly brought even more luck when a young halfling man, who introduced himself as Bevic Underfoot, said he'd overheard our conversation and would be interested in joining us on our journey. I was shocked. So grim a journey had already proved most desirable to the guild members, and I have hardly had to persuade anyone. Bevick said that he had been approached by one of Waterdeep's duty collectors about a particularly troublesome group of smugglers operating up the River Iblis. That comes down from the Cathanians. He said he was following the thread and was set to journey east any day now, and so we were three. After the initial flurry of success, no one else was much willing, but I counted myself very fortunate. We stayed in the hall and I bought us a good bottle of Arm Red to toast the newly formed company. I also had plenty of Avery's spiced beef and bean stew. I can spare the silver at the moment and I estimated if we were heading up into the mountains, it'd be a little while before I have another good meal. The company was fair too. Mina, as she likes to be called, is a softly spoken young woman, but I'm eager to see what she's like when gentle words don't cut it. Bivek, meanwhile, is a colourful fellow, Spent his youth in the circus, handy with knives by the sound of it, and plenty of stories in him. I think these two will do just fine for a few dark cold nights around a campfire as we... I had quite forgotten the nature of my mission. 
I think I'll have another wine if I've got any left in my stores. We are setting off at first light. 7th of Nightall We've settled down at the Weary Horse Inn. Thank goodness for roadside inns. We camped last night and the drawing inn is already bringing with it long and cold nights. I hope we can make headway up the mountain pass well tomorrow and find one of the villages to stay in. I don't know the country too well, despite its proximity to home. My eyes were always turned west as a boy, never east. The road here from Waterdeep has been good travelling. Mina and Bevec are both very capable riders and we've made good time. We made it to the weary horse just about with the dying of the light. My heart leapt with the warmth of the fire, though the locals are sullen and stare a little too boldly. I suppose they don't see too many travellers, though that's rather strange for an inn on the trail. The three of us are doing our best to keep our voices low, which seems to be the practice here. Apart from our whispers, all that can be heard is a rather subdued clinking of mugs. When we first arrived at the weary horse, I asked the keep if he had any maps of the Cathanian mountain range we could buy or even just see. He pointed only to a tattered rag framed and hung above the hearth in the common room. My immediate feeling of a stroke of luck soon crumbled as the three of us inspected the item itself. The map was full of gaps. Mina pointed out where we were, but beyond us to the east lay a confused jumble of mountains, swirling trails that seemed to go nowhere in particular, and places where the ink seemed to run and smudge. This is the best you've got, Bivek moaned to the innkeeper. His temper was a little hot to the poor man, but I can't say I was feeling too sympathetic. Even with all the eyes of the surly locals on us, I too wanted to hear what he had to say for himself. Difficult to map a region where most folk who go up that way don't come back, the man said before muttering something under his breath about an empty barrel, and he disappeared below into the inn's basement, leaving no opening for further questioning. This is going to be even more challenging than I'd thought. We all have our reasons for venturing into those mountains, but other than the east, none of us have any slight direction to aim for. I admit that this has tested me. Is this foolish? Riding off into some dark unknown in the hopes of what? At best, finding my brother, most likely dead and shallow buried, or at worst, joining him in the cold dirt. Even now I feel the westward trail calling my name. If it weren't for Mina's constant smile and Bivek's carefree optimism, I may be persuaded to turn around. That would be the last straw for my mother, I'm sure. Though what good returning with Percy's body in my arms will do for our relationship, I can't fathom. But no, it was I who drew this company together. It won't be I who disbands it so soon into our journey. What a turn the night took after I wrote last. I had just finished writing my last entry, Mina was engaged in her book, and Bivek was almost asleep in his drink, when a crash at the door jerked every head in that direction. A figure walked in and loudly stamped the mud off his boots in the entranceway. Cold flooded in from outside, and I felt a shiver run through me. We all watched as the man scanned the room. His eyes raced carelessly over the various lonely patrons nursing warm near-empty mugs, but they stopped dead on the three of us. Something about the ferocity of his gaze sent another shiver through me. He marched straight over to us. The village of Barovia is in need of heroes. He spat the last word like it tasted foul in his mouth. You'll do as well as any, he had said to us, throwing down a tattered envelope onto our table before turning swiftly to leave. Hold on, I called after the fellow and jumped out of my chair. Who are you? What's this letter about? I asked all the questions that came to mind in one quick torrent that made the old stranger turn and stare blankly at me for a moment. With a distinctly unhelpful tone, he replied only that Barovia, the village, was about a day's ride east, and suggested we set off at dawn as the Svalich Woods are not safe at night. I'd never heard of Barovia or the Svalich Woods. Bevec and Mina then launched once more into a barrage of questions. The old man did not turn back, though, and as swiftly as he'd arrived, he'd disappeared back out the door. None of the three of us were satisfied with this unhelpful and far from complete answer, so we rushed out the door to follow him. The bite of cold stung our fire-warmed faces as we emerged into the ghostly thick mist that now hung all about the weary horse inn. It had been a clear night, and a bright night, when we had arrived. I had never seen mists descend so quickly. Maybe since we were beginning to get up into the thick of the Cathanians, the local weather patterns could be different than I'm used to. 
Unable to make heads or tail of the man, and knowing that chasing him through the mist would be a surefire way of getting lost in the dead of night, we decided to retreat. The letter remained, untouched and spectre-like, on the table. It was dirty, and a sigil of a raven was stamped into the black sealing ink. We gathered closer to the warmth of the fire, the cold and mists of the outdoors seeming to chill us all in an instant, and Mina opened and read aloud the letter. Letter delivered to Godfrey Harker, Wilhelmina Oak, and Bivak Underfoot in the Weary Horse Inn. To whomever this letter may find, I, Burgomaster of the fair village Barovia, come to you in despair. My adopted daughter, my beloved Irina Koliana, has been these past nights tormented by some foul devil. This malefactor has been sucking the life from my people since time immemorial. Now, my dear Irina languishes and dies from an unholy wound caused by this vile beast. None can stand against him. So I say to you, give us up for dead and encircle this land with the symbols of good. Let holy men call upon their power that the devil may be contained within the walls of weeping Barovia. Leave our sorrows to the graves and keep this letter at the gate, so that none stumble blindly into this evil land. Kolyan Indirovich, Burgomaster, Barovia. Godfrey Harker's journal continued. It was a chilling tale. Why, oh why, did young Percy deign to venture up into these mountains? Dark, solitary places where God knows what madness is being enacted. The remote folk are always blighted with madness and melancholy. Bevec leapt at once to the map above the hearth, but no mention of Barovia or the Svalich woods that the stranger had spoken of could be found on the map. All we knew is that they lay a day's ride east of here. With no other course of direction, none of us knowing the exact location of the people and objectives we sought, nor knowing of any specific town or place of refuge, Barovia seemed at least a destination to aim for. If we could help this poor Master Indirovich with whatever blight seemed to be plaguing him and his daughter Irina in the process, well, then all the better for it. With the stranger's warnings of the dangers of the Svalich woods at night ringing in our ears, we didn't waste any time heading to our chambers. I'm turning in for the night now. The mist is so thick now, it looks as if someone has draped a very solid blanket outside of my window. I hope that it is cleared up by morning, or our journey will be slow and tiresome. Hi everyone, my name is A.S. Riel. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who has listened this far. Um, this has been the end of chapter one of the uh, expedition into Ravenloft fictionalized D&D campaign. Uh, I'm really excited about this new project. So uh, if you've made it this far, like I said, really appreciate it. I'm open to hear feedback. So if you've got any thoughts or feedback, I would love to hear it in the comments section and hope you all like coming along for the ride.